Hey everybody, I'm Fran Capitanelli, and we're going to talk about some Beatles stuff today, and then some. So the Beatles uh, unofficially announced their breakup on April 10th, but on April 10th, 1970, it comes out that the Beatles are splitting up, and it's a, of course, it's a huge headline. And a week later, Paul McCartney releases his first solo album. McCartney, once the Beatles broke up, he wasn't wasting any time. He was going to put a band together. He was going to put Wings together, but in the interim, before Wings happened, he made the album Ram. So he goes to make this McCartney Ram album with Linda, sends out a, a casting call for musicians, but they're not knowing that it's for the McCartney album. They're being told that, that it's for a commercial. So this one guitar player, Hugh McCracken, who is a very um, underappreciated session musician, partly because he didn't really want any attention ever. And how do I know this? Because <laughs> I'm related to him. He's my uncle, Hugh McCracken. He played on so many songs. He was a very, very laid back guitar player. He never did anything flashy. In fact, a lot of the songs that you know he plays on, you can just barely hear him in the background because he's, He's a field player and he's just kind of like adding a little bit of rhythm. He's just trying to like hit the spot with the rhythm and sometimes that takes being understated, which he definitely was. He was also a harmonica player. Let's just give you a little sample of, of what we're talking about here. Boo Child. get any more classic than that. Recognizable. Did a lot of acoustic work. Because he was just solid. Killing Me Softly. Uncle Albert. Eric Carmen, all by myself. Slide. There's another slide gem, one of my favorites right here. Have a good time. Paul Simon. Another day. Monica on New Frontier. From Foreigner 4. Acoustic on this one. Hall and Oates when the morning comes. Acoustic on this one. Big payback. Right place, wrong time. I can't play that much of each song or I'll get a copyright claim. We don't want that. And just so many others that, I mean, it's just not enough time in the day to list all the credits, all the albums that he played on. On so many huge hits, he's on 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, and that whole album is still crazy after all these years. He's the only session musician that's played on all four of the Beatles solo albums. And uh, if there's another one, leave me a comment. Let me know about it because I haven't been able to figure out that there's any other people that played on all four 
Beatles solo albums. Because he played on Ram, he played on The Wedding Album, Double Fantasy, he's on George's Cracker Box Palace, and Ringo's You're 16, You're Beautiful in Your Mind. Hugh McCracken was doing a session in Miami at Criteria doing the album Young Gifted in Black for Aretha Franklin with Bernard Purdy and Chuck Rainey. He got this message from his agent that there was a casting call for guitar players for a commercial. And he was like, well, you know, I'm not going to go back to New York and do an audition for a commercial. I'm playing with Aretha Franklin right now. And little did he know that it was for the McCartney Ram album, which McCartney recorded with another guitar player, Dave Spinoza. And when the album was done, McCartney felt like it needed to uh, change some of the guitar playing. He called up Hugh McCracken and he was like, hey, listen, I've made this record and the guitars are already done, but I'm not happy with all of them. So I want to do a bunch of stuff over. So they proceeded to do the whole album over again, as far as the guitars were concerned. So McCartney was stoked about it and he wanted to put this band together, Wings, which he invited Hugh McCracken to be a part of, and he invited him over to Scotland to start Wings and start writing songs for Wings, which basically was the Band on the Run album. Hugh, he was very tight-lipped about all this stuff. He was um, a very cool guy and was not really forthcoming with things that he was working on. Didn't want anybody to know. He never did an interview. Uh, from, you know, all the guitar players that do interviews for Guitar Player Magazine or whatever the magazines were at the time, he was just was not interested. And he really wasn't interested in even leaving New York. He was a New York session cat, and it would take a lot for him to, um, you know, even travel to do another record somewhere else, let alone tour. He kind of decided, I'm not going to tour anymore. That's not for me. I want to be in New York and just be a session cat. So the fact that he was in Miami was already a stretch, but he came back and he did the album over with McCartney. If you like this video and talking about stuff like this, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and you can support the channel by following the uh, link in the description. You can also donate by hitting the thanks button. So one night, fast forward 20 something years later, and he and I were hanging out because he was like a mentor to me as far as playing guitar. And I started playing guitar when I was like 12 or 13 and I was totally in awe of him because I would hear him on the radio and then we would see him at the birthday party or the Christmas dinner, whatever. One night he and I were hanging out and all of a sudden he opened up and told me this story about the McCartney album, about Ram and how he flew over to Scotland where McCartney's farm was. McCartney had invited Hugh McCracken and his wife, Holly, to go over there, start the band with them. And he was like, come on over, you're gonna stay at my farm. You can stay in the barn, which Hugh McCracken thought was gonna be like, you know, this beautiful, you know, McCartney's barn is probably like amazing. But it was just a barn. And they were literally sleeping on hay. <laughs> and it was cold. It kind of kicked into my uncle like, you know, I've got a good life doing sessions in New York. And he really just had this thing about touring. And he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do this tour. And at, at some point he made this decision, for better or for worse, I'm going to not do this gig. Uh, and he tried to convince Paul, hey, listen, I, I don't want to do it. I want to go back to New York and be playing on sessions. He was hugely successful. Paul didn't want to take no for an answer. And they went a, a few days, according to Hugh McCracken, you know, kind of going back and forth where he was trying to convince Paul, I am not the guy for you. So finally it came to a head. McCartney was like, okay. That's it. You're fine. You don't have to be a part of it. So he leaves and he goes back to New York. And of course, 
wings gets formed. Now I have this theory of Band on the Run. Band on the Run has got this slide guitar part on it that is very, very much a Huma Kraken slide guitar part. And I'm not saying that he's playing on it, but I almost get the feeling like they worked on that song and probably tracked it and McCartney went and just did the slide part like Huey did. Because you never hear McCartney playing slide really on, on barely anything else. And that part is such a Hugh McCracken style thing. Now that's just my theory. I don't know that for sure. But, and then in the lyrics to the song, the first one said to the second one there, I hope you're having fun. I mean, that just, to me, seemed like whenever I heard that line, I was like, oh, that's McCartney talking to McCracken saying, you know, we're starting this band. I hope you're having fun. Band on the run. So Hugh McCracken, he gets back to New York and he continues this stellar career. He goes on and it, now he's playing with Paul Simon and Steve Gadd and doing the Still Crazy After All These Years. And he's on Saturday Night Live all the time. He plays with Billy Joel on Saturday Night Live. And he bumps into John Lennon at a party uh, that I think was based around one of the Saturday Night Live episodes that he, d he did. It was like a rap party or something. And he bumps into to John Lennon. John Lennon says to him, hey, I love what you did on Paul's album. And he's like, thanks. And he's like, you know, that was just an audition to come play with me, which is just like the coolest line. And so John, uh, you know, for him to say that, like, yeah, playing on Paul's album is just a, an audition to come play with me. So they end up doing the song, Happy Christmas War is Over, where Hugh McCracken plays the acoustic on it. And sev several years go by where John Lennon's kind of like underground and Hugh McCracken's working, he's doing all the Steely Dan albums and he gets another call for an audition where they, you don't know who the artist is. And this time he's in New York, so he goes on it. It ends up being the John Lennon and Yoko double fantasy album that he plays on with this amazing band, Tony Levin. A very close friend of mine, a great musician, guitar player, Hugh McCracken. The man, I must have done a hundred record sessions with him. And I pulled out the one, the John Lennon record session uh, for Double Fantasy, where John was talking to, to uh, Hugh and joking around with him. Yeah, you, I, can you give me less than that? Can you just give me ba -boom? Yeah. Let's just come smashing in there, try it. Somewhere. Alone. If you've got your lick, if you can give me an emphasis on the backbeat as well. Yeah, but not, don't let it ring, you know. Some players, every note they play is the right note. And it means they're not going to play many notes. And John appreciated that right away, as had Paul McCartney, for instance, right uh, before him. Uh, Hugh had played on Paul's records. Okay, are you all on the phones? Hugh, get on the phones and you wouldn't play so fucking loud. I can't hear, I don't have my phones on. Well, ah, that's true. Okay, let's just try it, okay? The album comes out, and it's doing pretty well, and they're continuing to, to record after the fact for tracks that would end up coming out on Milk and Honey. They go to dinner one night, and John Lennon is like, hey, listen, I know you don't tour, and I know you turned down Paul because he wanted to be touring, and you wanted to be home, in New York, in the city. But I want to do this tour and I want to do it right. And I want you to come and your wife. She's going to be in the band because she was a, a wonderful singer. We're going to do it right. We're not going to spare any expense. It's going to be the best tour that has ever, you know, taken place on the planet, Earth. And Huey, he was so, they had such a, an incredible bond. He and John Lennon, they were out at this, Chinese restaurant talking about it. And John Lennon was basically, you know, he's pleading with him. I want to do this and I need you. I need you to do this with me. We're going to do this together. And so Huey said, okay, I'll do it. Which was the first time that he was going to be touring since uh, probably late sixties, early seventies. Whatever happened on those tours back then where it just made him, you know, touring was hard back then. It wasn't the, Prevost bus 
you know, that every individual band member gets now when you're in that level of a band. But now it was going to be plush. So he says yes. It was the next night that John Lennon got killed. He got the call at home from Jack Douglas, who was at the studio with Lennon. Lennon left the studio. They were working on one of the tracks that would come out on Milk and Honey. And Lennon gets shot. And uh, word got back to Jack Douglas right away. And Jack called Hugh McCracken, told him, and Hugh McCracken told me that that was just the single most devastating moment and thing that would ever happen in his life up till that point, and certainly up to the point where he was telling me the story, which was 20 something years after the fact. But anyway, there it is, Hugh McCracken. He was this wonderful guitar player. He passed away years ago in uh, 2000, 2013, but he had an amazing, absolutely amazing career in music. I mean, just that alone, playing on these two, the solo albums of the two main Beatles, Lennon and McCartney. I don't know how many people know of that story in the, the way that I do because he was so tight-lipped about it. And for some reason on this one night, when it was just he and I hanging out together, he opened up and told me the story. So glad I could share it with you. My name is Fran Capitanelli. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and uh, you can support the channel by pressing the link below uh, to make a donation or doing a super thanks. Super thanks is always great and much appreciated. And we'll see you next time.